Okay, in this higher order masking session, I'll be talking about the ciphertext comparison operation. Um, this is joint work with Jan-Peter Lenvers, Daniel Heinz, uh, Peter Pissel, and Igor Trubauheden. And all of them are here, are here at CHESS. So if you're interested in our work, definitely come talk to one of us. So a mandatory few introduction slides. Um, this, this talk focuses on lattice-based cryptography. As, and as I'm sure you're well aware, um, this will be our future post-quantum cryptography standards. Um, in particular, the techniques we present here will be applicable to Kyber, which will be the future key encapsulation mechanism. Um, but also a significant part of our work was developing this for Sabre. Um, so I'll also talk a little bit about that. Masking no longer needs an introduction, um, but like Francois, I really want to stress that in masking lattice-based crypto, we need these combinations between Boolean and arithmetic sharing. Um, and we need efficient conversions between them. Um, and we call these the B2A and the A2B conversions. And finally, what is this ciphertext comparison operation? This is an integral part of the FO transform, Fujisaki Okamoto transform. Um, this is a generic transform that can be used to transform a CPA secure encryption scheme into a CCA secure key encapsulation mechanism. And the intuition behind it is as follows. After you decrypt um, your ciphertext, you will get a plain text. Um, and this plain text, you will re-encrypt it into a re-encrypted ciphertext. Now you will compare this re-encrypted ciphertext with the originally submitted ciphertext. If they match, all seems good. If they don't match, you might be under a CCA attack and you would like to abort. This is a generic construction. Kyber uses it, but also some other, um, a large number of schemes will use this to transform themselves into a key encapsulation mechanism. Now, especially over the last year, it has become quite clear that this FO transform is a popular target for side channel analysis. Um, in particular, some of the papers that talk about this have catchy names. Um, one of them is presented at the session here at Chess. So if you're interested in that, also have a look at this. I'll give a very short intuition be between, behind how these attacks work. And the details here are not so important, but what you really need to understand is that the attacker can submit a completely random ciphertext. And in this case, everything will change in the re-encryption and the ciphertext won't match with the re-encrypted ciphertext at all. On the other hand, what the attacker can also do is submit a ciphertext that has a small error in there. Because of the way lattice-based schemes work, this error will be rounded away. And now everything will match except for this comparison operation. This comparison operation will fail in just one coefficient where we might have injected this error. And this is why masking, and then in particular protecting this, this comparison operation is so crucial. Um, you can be in either of two cases, either you're comparing two completely different values or values, polynomials that might only differ in a, in a small bit of a single coefficient. And in either of those two cases, you really cannot reveal what's written. Um, through any side channel, um, as soon as the attacker learns this one bit of information, this can typically be used to protest you. There have been timing attacks on this, uh, power analysis attacks, EM attacks, uh, plenty of examples there. In particular, last year at Chess, two masked comparison algorithms were broken. And this was exactly because they leaked this one bit of information. Um, they unmasked partial checks. And because of this, the adversary could know in which of these two cases um, they were. Um, this was called the first order hash based comparison. Um, they were also fixed in, in the same paper. Um, and then there is the higher order reduced comparisons, um, but this is not quite a full mass comparison. And most importantly, it is not applicable to Kyber or Sabre. At the onset of our work, there was one extra higher order comparison also presented at Chess last year, and that is called the decompressed comparison. Um, and quite importantly, this becomes a major bottleneck in the masking of, of Kyber and, and Sabre. Um, importantly, this, this accounted for more than half of the total execution time of the mass key, encapsula key um, decapsulation. So this was the situation at the onset of our work, and it's also where we can frame our contributions. Um, the first thing we did is show that higher order masking is really necessary for this operation. And we do this by showing a first order collision attack on the hash based comparison, a uh, second order collision attack, sorry. We do not break the masking scheme itself we do use a second order attack to break a first order masking. And the second contribution is that we look at this reduced comparison operation and we develop it into a full masking method. So I'll start with this first part and talk about the hash-based comparison. 
So what we're trying to do is compare the submitted ciphertext with re-encrypted ciphertext, and this re-encrypted ciphertext might be split into two arithmetic shares. What we will do is include an extra hashing step. This extra hashing step will prevent us from learning whether the inputs differ in only a small bit in, a, in, in one coefficient or whether they are completely different. So this hashing step will completely prevent this leakage. Um, ideally, you will want the hashing to spread these differences very quickly, but we will look, we will see that that is exactly what is not the case and what we will use in our attack. So our attack proceeds as follows. We first observe that the trace will contain two invocations of this hash function. This is on the submitted ciphertext from which we subtract one of the shares and then on the second share. We can be in either of two cases, either these two match in, in all but a single coefficient or they are completely different values. And as I said, ideally you will want the hash function to sort of behave identically in, in terms of the power consumption for both of these cases. Well, what we observed is that Keshek incrementally hashes this into five blocks and then we can propose an attack as follows. This is a horizontal collision attack where we place a small error into the final block of the ciphertext. Now, because we place this small error into the final block, the first block will typically be still exactly the same if we're in one of the cases and completely different if we're in the other case where this triggered a bit flip and the re-encryption changed. So what we will do is we overlay these two um, executions on the first block in the side channel trace and we compute a collision score. Um, again, so we can be in either of these two cases, first block identical or completely different. When we do this, we see a figure as shown here on the slide. And an important key takeaway here is that we can clearly distinguish which injected errors lead to a bit flip, lead to a completely different re-encrypted ciphertext and which ones do not. The results shown here are from a single trace. So with a single trace, we can break this masking and we need mathematical techniques, 6,000 traces total to recover a full key. So what we believe this shows is that higher order masking for these operations is really, really necessary, um, which brings me to the second part of my talk where I will talk about how we developed these reduced comparisons into a full method. So the way reduced comparisons work is as follows. So we have this, this ciphertext, it's a polynomial consisting of many coefficients. Um, and by subtracting the submitted ciphertext from one of the shares, we now need to check this for equality to zero. One thing you can do is express this as a Boolean circuit where you then mask all of the individual gates. Um, and before doing that, you will need these, these A to B conversions to bring everything into a Boolean masking. Um, you need many of these conversions in that case. This becomes quite expensive. Um, so this is typically not what you would like to do. So what reduced comparison does is it samples random polynomials and computes inner products. And after these inner products, you are left with just one a single coefficient um, for which you then need to do this A to B conversion and the Boolean equality test. So everything now became a lot cheaper. We only need one conversion uh, as opposed to a conversion on a very large now, it would be great if this was secure as such, but unfortunately, there is a certain collision probability. Um, the key takeaway here is that there is a probability that errors get canceled out. Um, it's different, it works different for a prime modulus and a power of two modulus, but the main problem here is this, this collision probability is simply too high. We can repeat this check a number of times to achieve a certain security level, um, but then we're again left in a situation where this becomes very, very costly. So what we wanted to do in our work is look at a way to reduce this to a single, a single iteration of this method. We didn't want to deal with this large collision probability, um, so we looked at the root of the problem. Um, so most importantly, some of you might be thinking um, at least Kyber is in, in the top case, Kyber uses a prime modulus. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that that is not true because Kyber does ciphertext compression at the end before it sends over the ciphertext, it will also fall into the power of two modulus case, just like Saber. Um, and that is why, especially for, for both of these schemes, this method was not efficient at all. Um, so looking at the root of the problem, the main problem is that when we work arithmetically modulo a power of two, there are many values that will result in zero divisors where the errors will cancel out and that is why this collision probability is so high. So the key takeaway, what we thought in our paper is, well, what if we increased this masking modulus? Uh, this is a technique that we borrowed from, from MPC literature. So what we will do is we increase this masking modulus with a parameter S. And because we sample the, 
the randomness only from, from S bits, um, there will never be these overflows where you get your modular reduction and end up at zero. So this key takeaway is simple. We enlarge this masking modulus and we no longer have to deal with this large collision probability. Um, by setting this parameter S, we can choose this probability freely. Um, so we choose it, we set it at a certain security level that we deem appropriate. Now, the key, the, the key idea is simple, but the implementation is a little bit more involved. In particular, we require a higher order mask ciphertext compression to um, deal with Saber and Kyber. And for this, we use a technique that will be presented on Wednesday. So if you're interested in that, definitely go, go to that talk. We also use a combination of Boolean to arithmetic and arithmetic to Boolean conversion. We use these methods efficiently um, to do this enlargement of the masking modules. Um, so let's look at how our method works. Um, remember, we need to compare the re-encrypted ciphertext with the submitted ciphertext. And now we also explicitly included this compression operation in there um, because it will be an integral part of our method. First, there is a pre-processing. Um, the details are not important. Again, this is for this, this higher order mask ciphertext compression. Um, have a look at the talk on Wednesday if you're interested in how this works or read our paper in more detail. In, the, in step one, we will convert to a Boolean masking um, with this A to B function, and we will remove a number of, of fractional bits that we added um, that were necessary for this mask ciphertext compression. The second step, we will, um, in step two, we will convert to an arithmetic masking where we now have this enlarged masking modulus. So we use a B to A conversion where we enlarge the masking modulus with this parameter S. And finally, the next two steps are identical to the reduced comparisons methods. We will squash all these coefficients together and do a final Boolean equality test for zero. Now, before moving on to the performance measurements, I wanted to shortly mention that we have a full DSNI security proof in our paper and also first and second order leakage evaluations. Um, so have a look at our paper if you want to know more about that. Okay, by the performance is shown on the slide here. We evaluated it on the ARM Cortex. And the most important figures are probably at the bottom of the slide where we compare to the decompressed comparison that was really the state of the art at the onset of our work. For second order uh, side channel security, we achieve a factor of four speed up. And for third order, we're almost approaching a full order of magnitude. I have also included the number for safe work on these slides. A significant part of our work was showing that these masking methods were better for Sabre, but we focused on Kyber in this talk because that will be our future camp standard. Um, now, before concluding, I want to tell you a bit about uh, follow-up work that we did. Um, the paper I'm presenting today was a first cycle chess uh, paper, so we have already worked on follow-up work. There's also plenty of, of other uh, papers that have appeared in the literature, but particularly um, our own follow-up work, we called it revisiting higher order mass comparison so that people understand that it's definitely a follow-up work to this work. Um, in this paper, we compare a lot of these different ciphertext comparison operations. Um, the ones in the paper here, but also ones that have been proposed concurrently in the literature. And there's one technique in particular that really relates to what I presented here today. Um, so if you remember, the key takeaway of our paper is that we will enlarge this masking modulus um, to reduce the collision probability. Um, we need this combination of A to B, B to A to move to this larger masking modulus. Now, what we will do instead in this new paper is to use Galois field multiplication. By using Galois field multiplication, we actually have all the, the nice properties we need. This also removes this, this collision probability, but we only need the A to B operation because after B to A, the values will be natively in this format. So a short word about performance. Um, the Galois field method is still not quite the most efficient method in the literature right now, um, but we feel that, that if you had a a hardware element where you might have um, instruction set acceleration for Galois field multiplication, uh, the situation might differ from what is shown on the slide here. I won't cover the methods um, the methods in this table. Um, for this, you'll have to have a look at, at the new paper. I'll just conclude by saying that all of our implementations are openly available. Uh, the t-test scripts as well, you can play around with them. So definitely have a look and thank you for your attention. Thank 
Collision probability, the parameter of the collision probability is, is it dependent on the mass order? Uh, it does not depend on the mass order, no. Um, so one thing, uh, sorry, for the audience online, so the, the, the question was whether could the collision probability depended on the masking order, um, and that is not the case. So, so one thing I did not mention is, um, so this collision probability does, um, it, it does, the, the number of bits we will compute on does depend on this collision probability. And that is also why we did this two to the minus 54 here. This will ensure that we're computing on 64 bit values. Um, so another thing that we have in the paper is a table like this, but for a larger collision probability of two to the minus 114, uh, 118, so that we compute on 128 bit values. Um, we are a little bit short of time. We will um, stop here since so it's Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for allowing us uh, during the presentation, the joint presentation with Kate. Um, okay, so we will talk about uh, masking, uh, arithmetic to Boolean conversion that has already been discussed um, earlier uh, in this session. Okay, so first, quick reminder about what's Kyber. Uh, of course, Mikil already explained that there is attacks, powerful attacks uh, against uh, Kyber, and there is multiple blocks that need to be protected. So it is a block diagram and all the gray boxes needs to be protected against such an attack. So the first components uh, are essentially polynomial arithmetic that are denoted in red. Um, and we protect all these with arithmetic masking, and that um, these have uh, linear overheads with the masking order. Then there is some functions uh, that are used to uh, sample randomness and hashing, and this is typically implemented with Boolean masking, um, and this has a quadratic overhead with the number of shares. And then there is other components, uh, such as like polynomial compression, uh, binomial sampling, and polynomial comparison that has been already put it forward in the previous talk. And this requires some arithmetic to Boolean and Boolean to arithmetic conversion. These typically have uh, quadratic overheads, and the talk today will be about them. So um, now if you look, okay, all uh, these components, how do they, I mean, influence the runtime of a mass Kyber implementation. So here, what you see on the X axis is the number of shares. And on the Y axis is the proportion of the runtime according to the, um, according to the, um, yeah, the full runtime okay, for category. So here, let's say Ketchak is one of these bar, then CBD sampling, and then polynomial compression, which includes the polynomial comparison, uh, and then the other components. And you can have that for all the number of shares. And what we did in this work is essentially working on arithmetic to Boolean conversion to reduce the CBD and the compressed part. And that's what we ended up with. So we have significantly been reducing the cost of uh, compression and CBD. And this is done, yeah, by optimizing mask and conversion techniques. So how have we been doing that? Essentially, the core idea is to use a uh, bit slicing. So when you want to mask um, Kyber, you will need to process uh, coefficients that are on, on prime field uh, and requires uh, uh, 13 bits to be represented. So here is a 12 register, uh, 13 register uh, in, your, in your, your, your CPU, and these are 32 bits uh, wide. And the first option that you can I mean, how can you lay out this coefficient into memory? The first, I, I mean, the first solution is to use what we call canonical representation. 
where you will put one coefficient in one register. So that's yeah, what we use usually. But what you can also do is to transpose um, this coefficient and use bit slice representation. So here you have in the same register, instead of having, I mean, you have um, one bit of each coefficient in one different register, and then you can parallelize that. So summing up what are the advantages of this technique. So the, the canonical representation is um, very nice because you can use addition and multiplication that you have in your CPU. However, if you want to process one single bit into, into um, the coefficient, it becomes harder and you do not fully use the memory uh, that you have in, in your CPU. If you look at the bit slice um, representation, it's nice because if you want to do um, bitwise operation, the throughput is typically high. Then you fully use a register, which is good for memory uh, and for um, noise because like you fully use the register. So hopefully there is uh, more noise uh, into the measurements. However, it requires some, some conversion, uh, con representation conversion between canonical and the bit slice representation. And this uh, conversion can be done with uh, w, w times uh, log W complexity, where W uh, is the number of coefficients. Uh, modulo some, uh, some W divided by the log of the P, if you can lay out more. Uh, uh, yeah, if the, yeah, you got it right. Sorry. I leave the floor to Gaetan. So now going on to the, the new gadgets. Um, so the idea is we have this uh, big slice stuff. So we are noting more like a hardware engineer in the sense that we can only perform bit operations. So if you look at the state of the art in doing a uh, mass addition, which is the basis for course for many conversion algorithms, they were based on like this canonical representation. So you want to minimize the number of register operation or like integer operation. And then you can do that using, uh, let's say involved uh, additional structure that are using the number, logarithmic number of um, coefficients. So this is like the cost of this, it's using the end gadget inside of it. And this is the, the important part is, is the sub subscript, which is the K. So it is using uh, K bits uh, and gates and you use it uh, log K times. So what we do is we take advantage of bit slice to go for a much simpler approach since we can use only sec and one. So single bits uh, and gate, we use a simple uh, ripple carry adder that's made of a uh, simple full adder, full adders that are based on uh, logic gates. And then we, we perform a nice uh, optimization trick that we can actually um, see that we can compute a full adder using a single end gate. That was not done previously in the literature. So you gain like two to three uh, speed up by doing that. And then this is a simple architecture that works on one slice out of our 32 slice for 32 bit processor. And then you can parallelize that over the full processor. Uh, once we have that, uh, so this is addition, straight adder. And, um, and we can show the security of this uh, thanks to uh, the Piney composition technique that we discussed yesterday already. So simply taking Piney and gate and so gates, uh, it is trivial that all of four gadgets uh, are secure. This is the case for this one, but it will also be the case for all the other gadgets. It's straightforward composition and it works at arbitrary order. So that's fairly easy to prove. Uh, so once we have this efficient adder, we can do addition mode P. So the state of the art technique is you do the addition, then you subtract P, and then you check, do I have another flow, which is the red bit. If you had another flow, this means that you don't have to do a modular prediction. So you select the outputs of your addition and this is your result. Otherwise, if you don't have an underflow, it means that this modular prediction minus P was relevant to do and you have to select that output. And this is what implemented uh, in the bottom part of the algorithm using um, these two sec and, and refresh. Uh, now that we have cheaper end gate, uh, addition, sorry, we have a new algorithm that starts the same way. But then simply we take this underflow bit, multiply it by P, so it's just copying this bit, and doing the addition again. So if we had another flow, 
we are adding via gain. So we are undoing just what we did. And if we had known the flow, then we are just adding zero. So it's an op. And uh, taking advantage of this bit slice means that we gain performance because the cost of our sec add is almost the same as the cost of as the cost of a sec end. So we gain like 30% uh, here. And this is again secure. So in performance, as you can see, like on the bottom line speed up, uh, it's about 20x. Uh, that's mainly comes from bit slicing. Um, so now we get into the conversions. Uh, so this is not table based. This is another algorithm that had been introduced uh, many more years ago. Um, so the idea is that we go from an additive masking to Boolean masking by remarking that if you take, uh, let's start with two shares, you have two additive shares, take the first share, and put that share and a zero. This is now a Boolean masking of that share. Not a very good Boolean masking, but it's still a Boolean masking. You can do that for all the shares and then make a refresh to get good Boolean sharings. And then um, you do additions using our Boolean adders. Uh, so that's the construction. You put the inputs, you refresh, you add. And if you want to do it for more shares, you do it first by pairs of shares. You get no uh, Boolean masking uh, of uh, two shares. And then you increase your share count and you add more and more. And the nice part of this is that you can make the bunch of the work in reducing the number of shares you have to add, add Boolean masking that I have few shares, so at the top of this tree. So it's very efficient because the further down uh, you go this tree, the larger the number of shares, and then the more costly it gets quadratically. So what's our optimization? It's really just enjoying the fact that our new sec adds um, is, is piney. So actually, we can show that we don't need to put any refresh. We can directly take as inputs this bad Boolean, this bad Boolean sharing that are a share and a zero. And I won't get delve into the details, but the proof is actually very simple and can be carried over to many other techniques that would use the kind of mask or gadgets that mix the number of shares a bit everywhere. Um, so the left figure is for this uh, new adder. So of course, the performance gain comes mainly from the new uh, adder, but also from removing the refresh. And on the right part, uh, you can see that when we do this conversion, uh, modulo P that's slightly more involved. I mean, a, a, a naive way would be to just replace uh, the ads with an addition mod P. Uh, but we have an additional trick. See the paper for that. And as you can see, the, the speed up is slightly larger. So uh, let's now move to uh, Boolean to arithmetic masking. So um, there we are still mod two to the power k, we will go to mod p afterwards, but it's it's almost the same. So here we, there is almost nothing new. So it's a well-known technique You generate a uh, many random value that will be your arithmetic share in the end. You convert them to Boolean, add in this uh, your Boolean uh, masking, you are still masked. Then you refresh this and you unmask. So our contribution here has been to show that you can use a slightly weaker refresh gadget than was, that was known. So we gain a few percent in performance here. And if you want to do it uh, mod P, it's the same. You just do the addition mod P. So that's one solution. The other solution uh, is basically the one that was introduced by Francois in the beginning of this session, uh, which is interesting in the sense that it can be uh, more efficient when you have numbers that have very few bits uh, to convert. Like if you have a single uh, masked uh, Boolean bits to convert to an arithmetic masking, you gain much more because you don't have to do this all of this one bit conversion. If you have a single bit or two bits, you have only to do two bits conversion instead of like 13 that you pay directly for the cost of the generic one. Um, so that's the gain in the performance. So here we compare or new improved uh, generic algorithm compared to the one bit conversion. So you can see that the speed of the generic is roughly half of the one of the single bit conversion. So the conclusion is that if you are doing uh, Kyber, 
uh, you have to convert numbers that have three bits, so the generic is more efficient. Um, and finally, the last one is the binomial sampling that we have um, in Kyber. So we have two of these uh, random numbers that come out uh, of Ketchak, um, and we want to compute the difference of these amine weights of two two-bit values. So uh, the state of the art for doing that was using uh, half adders because computing amine weight is just adding bits, subtracting. Uh, you can do that fairly easily by just uh, removing a modulus um, using that equation. So you just negate the bit and then you can just do addition. Our main contribution here is remember that we have a new, more efficient full adder, and then you gain a factor of two or more in the performance by getting a full adder for the same cost as we had the alpha adder previously. So it's like simply just adding the bits feeding them at the input of our full adder as much as possible uh, when we have like inputs that you can feed. And that's it um, for the implementation. So um, we have also been implementing uh, all this, of course. And at first we've been implemented that uh, fully in C with GCC option. And as my, you might know, if you do that, you end end up if in having first order leakages. What we did uh, to remove these leakages was essentially to write um, only the end gate, XOR gate, and some copy operation um, in assembly. And we did that in a very defensive manner. Um, we just put it one single share of one sharing at the time in the register file. Uh, and then we added some kind of architecture cleaning uh, by like writing random data to, to memory and flushing random data from memory. Um, and basically that induced a factor, uh, a slowdown factor by, by a factor uh, 1.6 uh, on the performances. So for the conclusion, I think that over the last year, uh, all the community has made a big improvement uh, in masking Kyber. So if we compare our work with the work um, presented last year, for four shares, we have a, we gain a factor five in total uh, on Kyber. And where does it come from? Um, basically, it comes from two different things. The first one is we improve the arithmetic to Boolean conversion and Boolean to arithmetic conversion. So that's a significant gain. There has been also um, optimization for like polynomial comparison, uh, polynomial compression, and some unweight computation uh, for the CBD. So that's also part of the improvement. And the resulting point is as in unmasked implementation, Ketchak is again the bottleneck of the implementations, which means that if you want to improve the performances of lattice based crypto, even in the mask world, we need to have fast Ketchak. Um, regarding security, I think what's nice with uh, bit slicing is that um, you, as I mentioned, uh, you have more algorithmic noise. And then we implement like very simple gadgets in the end, and we just need to write down uh, securely end gates and refresh and copy some exhausts. And thanks to, to, to Piney, uh, we have um, easy, com uh, easy composition, even though we are dealing with a uh, different number of shares. And that concludes the talk. Uh, the code is online for Kyber and for Saber. Yeah, thanks. Or um, questions? I really try to keep this thing to a bigger Um, we have not tried to do that in this work. Ah, yeah, the question was, have we tried uh, to use a larger modulus um, for the application to Cyber and Kyber? No, uh, but I guess like the overhead will just be, I mean, in the, yeah, sorry, I start again. In the paper, we do that for power of two modulus, not for prime modulus, I think.
uh, yeah, we, we should check the details in the paper later. Uh, that's a good question. Um, our uh, implementation is um, also a plain, uh, yeah, so the question was, where does our Ketchak implementation come from? Um, essentially, it's a Ketchak implementation we've been implementing ourselves. Uh, it's, yeah, because we use the Pini notion, uh, it's kind of trivial to ma map um, mass Ketchak uh, into a uh, an uh, unmasked track to a masked track. So we just replace the end gate by uh, the pini end gate, and, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we do not claim that our catch track is the fastest in the world. No? So the next talk is uh, from the Yeah, I know that I first need to do this series from the Sakai, the University, and the next talk is Yeah. Hello, my name is Wang Weijia. I'm going to present the work entitled Side Channel Masking with Common Shares, joined with Huo Chun, Yu Yu, Ti Fanjie, and Su Yang. Here I list what I'm going to present. First, I will give the background and motivation of this work. After that, I will present the three theoretical contributions. Then, I will show their application to the mask implementation of the AES. The last part should be the conclusion. First, I give the background. Masking is one of the most investigated countermeasures against the side-channel attack. It is made up of two ingredients. The first one is called encoder, and it randomizes each sacred variable CX into a number of shares, such that N and D shares are independent of X. So we can see that the encoder provides the security for the sacred variables such as a key. Besides, the cryptographic primitive usually is a computation from input to output. So we need to secure the computation, which requires the second ingredient, the private computation. Here I give an example. Say we want to compute x plus 1 times z, where x, y, z are separate variables. What we can do is to transform each elemental operation into their mask correspondence whose, in whose input and output are both shares. Here, addition is transformed to addition gadget, and multiplication is transformed to multiplication gadget. After those transformations, we can transform an unprotected computation to a protected one, ensuring that NND intermediates are independent of the input circuit. We call this kind of security as deep privacy or deep probing security. So this is the basic idea of masking. A challenging and long-term tasking regarding the masking is to design good gadget. In the following, we introduce the well-known ISW modification using an example with three shares. We introduce this one since it is quite famous in the community of side channel countermeasure. And our proposed scheme is also based on the concept of it. The input are two three shares corresponding to two multipliers, and the output is three shares. 
the gadget impl implements the modification in the shared form. First of all, it calculates the outer product of the input shares, resulting in a 3 times 3 matrix. We can see that summing the entries of this matrix gives the circuit output of the modification, and summing the entries of each row gives the shares of the circuit output. And to secure the process of summation, some random variables should be added in. So the procedure of ISW modification can be extracted as output calculation, random addition, and compress. This is the basic idea of ISW computation. We can see that the masking countermeasure comes with some overhead. The computational cost of ISW scheme increases by a factor of d square and it requires around d square random variables. We are interested in reducing the overhead of masking, which is a challenging regarding the practical usage. And we consider both computational complexity and randomness complexity. The computation of this work can be divided into theoretical and practical ones. In the theoretical aspect, the contribution covers the new modification gadget, the new paradigm, and the new proof technique. In the practical aspect, we apply this theoretical contribution to the AES. So, in the following, we first describe the theoretical contributions. We describe the masked communication algorithm which common shares. The basic idea of our scheme is to amortize the cost of several masked communications in our new scheme. A part of shares of different variables are the share, thereby randomness and intermediate variables should be reused among different operations, significantly reducing the cost. So before presenting the new multiplication gadget, we compare the Boolean sharing and inner product sharing. The Boolean sharing is quite simple. The summing of shares gives the circuit variable, but we can see that it will be insecure if there exist common shares across two different Boolean sharings. The inner product masking is slightly more complex than the Boolean one. The inner product of the shares and the vector of public values give the circuit variables. The original purpose of inner product sharing is to protect against the higher order side channel attack in low noise case. But in this work, we exploit another interesting property of it. That it, it allows existence of common shares if the public vectors are linearly independent. Now we can describe our new scheme allowing cost amortization. Here, this finger depicts two modification gadgets with full shares. For each gadget, it first transforms the Boolean shares into inner product ones with common shares, where the last three shares should be the same, making the lower right three times three sum matrix of all product as the same as well. Then, randomness in the, in the compression and refreshing can be reused across the two multiplications. So, we can see that the input and output of the refreshion are Boolean and inner product sharing respectively. And the input and the output products are inner product sharing with common shares which enables the cost amortization. Then we talk about the pre-computation-based design paradigm. 
a promising feature of our scheme is that most of the intermediate variable can be pre-computed. For example, still in this finger, the intermediate variables related to the common part should be independent of the input and only determined by the randomness. Thus, these variables and their functions can be pre-computed for each part of the algorithm. In this, uh, in this respect, a masked implementation of a uh, cryptography function can be divided into two phases, pre-computation and the online computation. In the first phase, which is pre-computation, we can generate a set of pre-computed values. But note that it is, only, it is not one-time effort. Yeah, it runs for each call of the cryptographic function. The online phase uh, will be very efficient without any random bits. This property can lift our masking scheme in many scenarios. For example, here we show a challenge response authentication protocol where Alice presents a question and the Bob must provide a valid answer to be authenticated. The answer can be calculated by encryption from question and a pre-shared symmetric key. To prevent the side channel attack, the encryptions are protected by masking. Both Alice and Bob can be pre-computed uh, can can pre-compute the viral variables before the answer or question completed arrive, and then they perform the online computation. This strategy is quite practical since the transforming of answer or question is relatively slow compared with masked implementation. The last theoretical contribution should be about the uh, should be about the uh, security proof. Why more rate of masking should should be the probably security? It is designed to be secure in the probing model. That is, any D intermediates are independent of the secret input. But proving the proving security requires to analyze all the possible tubes of the intermediates, making it to be hard to directly prove the security of bio circuit with many gadgets. Composable security notions are very important and can be make the proof improving model easy. Using them, one can concrete, concentrate on analyzing every single gadget and, uh, and, and leave the rest to the probing propagation. Such notions include non-inference, strong non-inference, and panic, but they require that the randomness used in different gadgets should be independent. However, in our scheme, due to the common shares, Many intermediate variables and randomness are reused across different gadgets, and thus new composable notions are needed. We put forward a new notion named randomness reusable non-inference, which is shortest as RNI. RNI is stronger than both NI and SNI. It is reasonable because SNI or NI requires independent randomness. Besides, RNI support the trivial composition, which is a bit similar to the pining. Note that the security for the case of parallel composition is easier to prove than the case of general composition. Inspired by this, we consider the situation where the gadget can be divided into two disjointed uh, sets, such that every cross gadget input output connection across Crosses, crosses the two set, okay, and randomness or intermediate variables we use is only limited within each set, as illustrated in the in the right finger. Uh, in other words, the composed gadget is a bipartite graph, which gadget as vertices and connection of gadget as edges. 
with the above. Any composition that can be described as such a bipartite graph is RNI, as long as the parallel composition of gadget in each partition is RNI. This actually enables deducing the proof for any mask implementation to the parallel uh, composition of, of our gadget. Um, and, and compare which other well known compos composable security notions such as NI or SNI. Our new one, which is RNI, intrinsically supports the randomness of variables uh, or intermediate variables we use. Finally, to show the practical relevance of the new masking, we describe a, a application of our countermeasure to the block cipher AES128 in the pre-computation based paradigm. Okay, uh, we implement mask AES on the ARM Cortex-M architecture and report the performance result. It shows that our scheme contributes to a speed up for the online phase compared with the state-of-the-art implementations. Notably, when the security order is H, our implementation achieves a gain of more than 100 percentage in the timing. We provide a t-test evaluation for our implementation in the left finger, which validates the security order. It should be noted that in the implementation, we do not attempt to eliminate all the transitional leakage that may damage the independent leakage assumption. So this good result for the case of D equals 1 is a bit surprising since uh, there is transitional leakage but it is still secure. So uh, we contribute this advantage to the relatively more complex algebraic structure of inner product in a product masking than the Boolean one. Uh, to confirm the above intuition that the inner product masking can overcome some lapses in implementation such as transitional leakage, we perform a t-test which all parameters are once. It actually becomes to the Boolean, mas Boolean masking and the algebra structure is less complex than the case using distinct non-zero non values. So the t-test result is in the right finger. It shows that there exist a multiple uh, points where the security order does not hold due to the transitional leakage. It confirms that our masking scheme using parameters that are not once is more robust to some lapses in implementation. So here we conclude the, the, the work. For the theoretical contribution, we proposed the, the our multi-st a modification gadget which commercials, which achieves good computational and randomness complexities. The second theoretical contribution should be the pre-computation based design paradigm for masking where the online phase can be significantly accelerated thanks to the pre-computation. Besides, uh, we invent a new security notion for proofs that intrinsically support randomness or variables reusing. We described an uh, application of our countermeasure to the AES in the pre-computation based uh, design paradigm. It shows that our scheme contributed to a speed up for the online phase. Besides, we provide a t-test evaluation for our implementation which validates the security order, but also which is more importantly, it shows that the more complex algebra structure of our masking makes it more robust to some lapses in implementation such as such, such as the, the transitional leakage. That is, thanks for your listening. Right. Um, can you hear us? Yes. Yes, great. Uh, so do we have question? No question here and uh, not in the chat. 
Um, so um, I think we will uh, be all happy to move to the coffee break. That is a bit uh, tighter than expected. So we still have uh, about 20 minutes. So uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you for your listening. If you can have a session that is in your area. <laughs>